so I, I got a phone call from one of our internal team about a really interesting project and um, the possibility of working with a company called D-Wipe, Decon Wipe. Um, and it was looking at kind of firefighters exposure and trying to remove a wipe to help protect them. Uh, this was really interesting for me and couldn't have come at a better time because uh, I've been working with my PhD student uh, Penny who was working at University at Buffalo uh, based in Ghana looking at exposure to people there um, from some of the contaminants you might expect to get from a fire. Uh, so this seemed like a perfect opportunity to collaborate and hopefully help them to see how effective their wipe is at removing these contaminants and protecting people. It's really interesting uh, looking at the toxicity of different chemicals and how the toxicity of fires has changed over time. If you look at some of the first fires when we were just burning wood, um, they could have possibly considered safer than they are today. Uh, now a lot of the plastic products that we use, sometimes we put a lot of flame retardants in material. The building surfaces that we have here, everything around us is kind of designed so it doesn't burn and combust. Uh, it gives us a bit of extra time to get out in case of a fire, which is really, really good. Uh, but then sometimes some of these chemicals, when there is a fire, can start to degrade, break down and produce some really toxic compounds that might not have been a, as abundant a few years ago. So the process that we went for for this investigation was to try and firstly grab a variety of different surfaces that we thought firefighters might come into contact. Um, so what would be effective to see how good the wipe is at removing these substances. With each of these different environments, we tried to clean them as best as we could first thoroughly. We also took lab blanks to make sure that these things were clean. We then spiked them with concentrations of the different pollutants that we thought we might expect at levels which would be appropriate for a firefighter exposure. Uh, we then used a variety of different wipes, including the D wipe, to kind of test which one would be most effective at removing the pollutants. We did a chemical extraction phase to remove these pollutants from the wipes, concentrated them down into a volume of 30 microliters, and then injected this onto an instrument called gas chromatography mass spectrometry. So the groups of pollutants that we were looking at, um, we looked for some of the most co toxic compounds ever made called dioxins. Uh, there's 210 different dioxins. The ones that we're most concerned about are 2378 substituted chlorine ones, which are a subset of these. And so what we had to do was to kind of get a really detailed, specific method, which was able to separate these compounds out so we could effectively quantify them. The other group of compounds that we're looking for are PAHs, or polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbons. These are a group of organic compounds which have been produced by fires for many, many years. They're the same compounds that you find in cigarette smoke, if you burn your toast, all of these different kind of things. So again, we needed a method which would be able to separate these different compounds out and analyze them. So the research team that was involved was myself. Uh, we have Daniel Neepshire and uh, Danny Curran as well. Uh, we've been working with Danny for a few years as a student here at Manchester Metropolitan University. And we like to keep our good students involved with the research, doing the activities. Uh, so Danny was essential at extracting the samples, performing the initial analysis, and now we have Daniel who's going to be interpreting the results and kind of coming up with our main findings. So first thing that we start with or what we get when we have uh, injected our sample into the GCMS is basically um, this is where we put on our, our sample list. So we have all of our samples, our standards that are running through. Um, basically which is done with one of our collaborators at Waters. Um, and then basically he sends us the data and the first thing you want to make sure is that your concentrations that you prepared of the known concentrations are actually giving you what you want. Um, so you use this uh, lovely machine, uh, um, sorry, lovely software that you, um, that is used with this machine and you have your different calibration standards. Um, and then you can choose the different um, compounds that we're looking at. So for example, these are all the um, dioxins that we're looking at. And the first thing that you need to make sure is that uh, all of them kind of were detecting the right peaks on the machine and um, have to check the retention time. Um, so basically what you can see in the rest of it is um, the chromatogram. So basically this is the peak that we're looking at. Um, if you're not really sure if it detected all of the peaks, um, you can easily zoom in and go to as far as you, as you want. So that's the, that's the good thing about uh, the software. You can uh, actually check if the right peak was detected and if the area um, was detected uh, completely underneath the um, peak. Um, 
And on the other side, you have the calibration. So for each of the compounds, the program gives you a calibration range. Um, so for the calibration range, um, you have this over here, uh, where it basically gives you the compound that you're looking at. So you have to feed um, the system what you want to look at and where it would expect it. So this is basically where you check the retention times if they come out all at the same time to make sure it is the same peak all the time. Uh, and then you, you get the calibration line. So for the known concentrations that we put in here, we get a nice little calibration line. And what we usually look at is, um, first of all, if the peak uh, was identified correctly and uh, uh, kind of the whole area. And then we look at the R square value, which gives you how good your calibration line for this particular compound in the end is. Um, usually in science, you're very, very happy when you have three nines. And basically, this is what you do for each of the compounds. So you check, or for each of the calibration standards. So you go through, see um, that the that the peak uh, area has increased. It's still at the same time. It's still the same peak, and this is basically where you make sure that for all the calibration lines that you were making up, everything was picked up. The next step, then doing this for each of the different compounds. And as you can see, we have some peaks where there might be some so-called so co-illusion. So basically, they come out at very, very similar times. Um, so you have to make sure that, um, especially for these ones, he separates them. And again, here you can see it worked pretty well. So if we just go back to the next, which should be the next one, again, we can see it could easily um, distinguish between both peaks. So we have, for, uh, for both of the compounds, we see he's choosing the right peaks, everything. Um, it's getting quite, uh, it's, it's, it's going okay. And again, we can see our calibration standard for this particular compound in this um, shows that, that this is there. So after this all has been checked for the calibration, basically this is where we then go into the data analysis. So this is all, let's assume this is all checked. Kind of preliminary indicates um, that the Deacon wipe um, takes off more of the pollutant than uh, compared to an alcohol um, uh, wipe. So the research is currently ongoing, uh, but one thing we can say positively now is the D-wipes are effectively removing pollutants from a variety of different surfaces and we're able to remove polyaromatic hydrocarbons and we're able to remove dioxins. Uh, the research is going to continue over the next couple of days so we can see exactly what percentage we can remove from these different surfaces and how well the wipe performs against some other more traditional methods of uh, removing pollutants such as washing your hands, uh, using alcohol wipes, those types of things.